several years here on Chalk Talk, we have been talking about wide band gap materials. But for a lot of those years, we were talking about what could be. But this Chalk Talk is something different. We're talking about how wide band gap materials can make a difference today in a growing area of electronic engineering industrial charging solutions. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Prasad Padachuri from OnSemi and I explore the benefits of silicon carbide-based high-density industrial charging solutions. We explore the topologies of totem pole, PFC, and half-bridge LLC circuits. The challenges that bidirectional CLLC resonant DC to DC converters are solving today, and how you can take advantage of On Semi's silicon carbide charging solutions in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from On Semi. Hi, Prasad. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi. Okay, so we are talking about silicon carbide-based high-density totem pole PFC and LLC-based industrial charger solutions today. But Prasad, before we chat about the solutions in this arena, we need to start with lithium-ion batteries, right? Yes. As we know that all the lithium-ion batteries are multiple cells. And each cell have the maximum voltage of like a 4.2 volts, which is considered as 100% charge. And when it go down to 2.5 volts, it will be considered as a discharged. Based on the number of cells, for example, most of the power drills and those things normally have the five cells, which are equal to 18 to 20 volts battery. So some vendors call as 18, some call as a 20 volts. And then similarly, if you have 10 cells, it will become 36 to 40 volts. And if you go for a 12 cells, it is a 48 volts, 20 cells, it is an 80 volts battery. Then there is a 15 volts cells also available, which is a 60 volts battery. For example, the power tools from big companies like Black & Decker or uh, TTI, Ryobi or Milwaukee, these are the two normally used 20 volts batteries, 40 volts batteries, and 60 volts and 80 volts batteries. Some customers may go up to 96 volts. Overall, the charger design require wide output voltage from 20 volts to 96 volts to cover the multiple types of batteries. So Prasad, what kind of specific applications are we talking about here? The target end applications are certainly the power tools. Some of them are electric saw, electric drills, riding lawn mowers, push lawn mowers, robotic grass cutters, then also autonomous guided vehicles are some of them. Then also can be targeted for a lightweight vehicles like a two-wheelers, three-wheelers, and EVs like a smart. In China, we used to see like less than $10,000 type of cars. So those required uh, external chargers sometimes, mainly focused on industrial applications. Okay, so Prasad, let's talk about totem pole PFC and half-bridge LLC. Can you explain the differences between these two topologies? Yes, the totem pole PFC is uh, needed wherever the applications require a power factor correction, especially in Europe. To meet the IEC standards, you need to have a power factor of greater than 0.9 and then harmonic distortion between 5 to 10 percent of THD. So to achieve the THD, you need power factor correction circuit. Traditionally, a lot of customers used to use a bridge rectifier followed by a boost PFC, but on semi proposing the totem pole PFC, Main advantage is you are eliminating bridge rectifier. But the totem pole PFC is replaced with the full bridge rectifier circuit with four switches. One hub bridge is a high frequency switching leg, which is doing the boost function on each positive cycle and negative cycles. And the other hub bridge is low frequency leg operating at line frequency. So that means based on positive cycle, one of the switch will be on, and then the negative cycle, other switch will be on. But one of the major requirements for the totem pole PFC is for a high frequency leg, you need to have fast body diode of the device that needs a silicon carbide devices or a GAN devices to be used for high frequency legs. You cannot use silicon superjunction fats in that sublet. Then coming to the LLC, 
So what we do normally is based on the input voltage of 120 volts AC to 277 volts, based on the totem pole PFC, we boost the voltage close to like 430 or 450 volts type of DC voltage. Then as a second stage, we have implemented the hub bridge LLC. So the input to the hub bridge LLC is a 400 volts DC or 450 volts DC. Then the secondary side is the battery voltage. Based on the battery voltage, it can be a 20 volts or 24 volts or 48 volts or 60 volts or 80 volts. You can able to design your transformer. Like for example, if I am doing a design between 20 to 60 volts, I may take the middle voltage like a 40 volts as a transformer trans ratio. If it is a 400 volts DC bus, 200 volts will be applied to the primary side. Then if you need a 40 volts output, for example, ratio is a five. So based on the ratio of primary to secondary with five, you can able to design your transformer. Then on the secondary side, you can use a multiple different types of synchronous certification topologies. The one here we are showing is what we call as a full wave rectifier. Main advantage is those power MOSFETs are driven with respect to ground, but the voltage requirement of those FETs are minimum needed is 2.5 to 3 times than the output voltage. Then for a bridge primary side LLC, we can use a silicon carbide FETs or a silicon superjunction FETs with fast body diode also can be used. GAN also can be used there. Then ANSEMI also have a controllers to Proton Pole PFC, which is NCP1681, and the LLC NCP3994, and all other are the gate drivers. So Prasad, what does the output power versus efficiency look like in this case? In the one kilowatt example, the battery voltage is like a 48 volts we set. The efficiency is measured between 100 watts to one kilowatt. And you can see at the red line, which is showing a 230 volts, which is a European mains, are line to line for the US market, you will see like a 96% efficiency on average. While when you go for 110 volts AC or 120 volts AC, your input PFC losses are a little bit higher. Because of that, your efficiency will be around 95% at 50% load. And then at one kilowatt, you will be a little bit lower efficiency. Okay, so can we take a closer look at that two kilowatt charger with silicon carbide GAN solution you mentioned earlier? Yes. The two kilowatt charger is an improvement of the one kilowatt charger, but one kilowatt applications, we normally can use alternative to silicon carbide, like a superjunction fats on the LLC stage and maybe a GAN devices. But when two kilowatt and above, we need to have a silicon carbide device because the existing uh, GAN devices in the market may be not good enough and uh, because of the power dissipation and the packages available. And the superjunction fats are, you cannot get the density what you are looking for. So in case of the two kilowatt design, Hubbridge LLC is exactly the same. What we modified is on the secondary side. In the previous design, we used a full wave rectifier. So I mentioned that you need the FET voltages required like a 2.5 to 3 times. While on the high power designs, normally we will go with full bridge circuit. And one of the major advantage of the full bridge circuit is you can able to use the FETs 1.5 times or maximum two times of the rated voltage. For example, in this design, they use a 48 to 72 volts output, and you can able to use 100 volts FETs in this design or 120 volts. But because of the two kilowatt power range, you may need to use a lower RDS on FETs, maybe like a 70 milliohms, 650 volts devices on the primary side of the LLC. And then you may need like a 32 milliohm devices for the high frequency leg of the totem pole PFC. Same design can be extended it up to three kilowatt with the same concept, more or less. Only the thing is you may use low RDS on the secondary side, 100 volts FETs with a lower RDS on like a one milliohm Similarly, the totem pole PFC for three kilowatt, you can able to maybe need to use 25 milliohm versus 32 milliohm device. So what about an EV charger? What would that look like here? EV charger is also looks more or less very similar to this design, but main difference between industrial chargers versus EV chargers, EV chargers nowadays required bidirectional chargers. So that means on the totem pole PFC on the front end as a topology, it can work for bidirectional application. And similarly, for the LLC topology, what we discussed, also applicable to it. But the controllers, what we used on the two kilowatt design are mixed signal ICs, like a 
NCP 1681 and uh, NCP 1394. Those are mixed signal ICs. Those are not designed for bidirectional. So you need to use a microcontroller or DSP to control the bidirectional flow. While in case of the unidirectional, if you don't need a bidirectional, secondary side uh, can be used a, a short key diodes instead of the FETs. But latest OBC designs are mostly looking for a bidirectional designs. So, Prasad, we also need to talk about PFC efficiency and power factor efficiency, right? Yeah. So for the two kilowatt design, the efficiency at we mentioned about a close to 98% at that full load two kilowatt. And similarly for three kilowatt also, we will get the similar efficiency. At half load, like a one kilowatt or one and a half kilowatt, you may see like a close to 98. While the power factor for this one is uh, almost like a 0.99. Okay, so let's also talk about three kilowatt silicon carbide solutions as well. Yeah, we can basically extending the same two kilowatt design to the three kilowatt design. Only modifications what we are doing is higher current power switches, both on the PFC stage, proton pole PFC stage, and then hub bridge LLC, and also the full bridge secondary side synchronous rectification, different devices, and also the magnetic so the transformer will be bigger size. So, Prasad, what about a more powerful solution, like a six kilowatts? What kind of solutions does OnSemi offer here? For 6.6 .6 kilowatt applications, we talked about the totem pole PFC. So, we can still use the same totem pole PFC single stage by using a low RDS on FETs, like at 650 volts, 12 milliohm devices, and we can able to deliver. Or we can able to interleave two of the totem pole PFCs that means two high-frequency average legs will be used and two inductors will be used. So then the power will be divided like a 3.3 plus 3.3, like 6.6 .6 kilowatt, it can deliver. Then on the LLC stage, in three kilowatt, we have the hub bridge LLC. Like in 6.6 .6 kilowatt application, we will have the full bridge circuit on the primary. That means two hub bridges and then transformer is connected between the center point of the two hub bridges. And the secondary side, we still keep the full bridge circuit for uh, high voltage applications for like an onboard charger, for example, which have the 400 volts DC bus, some medium light vehicles, maybe 200 volts. But if you need to deliver like a 48 volts or 80 volts output at 6.6 .6 kilowatt, we need to modify the design such a way that we replace a single transformer with the two transformers. The primary side of the two transformers are connected in series and uh, two full bridge circuits are connected in secondary side, such a way that you are paralleling the two 3.3 kilowatts secondary side rectification to get to the higher power of 6.6. .6. While at 400 volts, you can use a single transformer and single bridge rectifier. So Prasad, what are the biggest benefits for this kind of bi-directional converter? So the one of the major advantage of the bi-directional converter is uh, in onboard charger applications, for example, you have at your, in your garage a solar panels and a data storage is available, for example. Then during the charging the car, it is taking from your mains 240 volts and charging the car with uh, what we call as a level two chargers. While in the bi-directional mode, your car battery can power your home. Like when power down during hurricane times or during the storms, power failure happen then you want to power your home using your car battery, you can able to do that. That is the major advantage of the bidirectional charger. For example, Ford Lightning, which is 150 truck, have that capability. Very cool. Now, Prasad, what kind of performance are we talking about here? The second stage LLC topology is from AC input to the battery charging condition. We'll have the 98%. Similarly, from battery to the grid connection in reverse way, you will have around 97.5 percent efficiency. But then it depending upon the battery voltage, like if, for example, if you take a 400 volts battery, if the battery is fully discharged to like a 250 volts, the FC can be lower till it charges to like a 20 percent of the battery. But once it charges to the 20 percent of the battery, efficiency is above 97 percent and close to 98.5 percent. So you guys also have charging solutions in the 7 to 11 kilowatt range as well, right? Yes. When onboard chargers, customers are looking for higher power, which are the 7 kilowatt and 11 kilowatt is become mainstream nowadays, especially Ford Lightning trucks, 
uh, other, I can say the high-end cars. For the 11 kilowatt design, on semi developed a APM32 modules for a 480 volts AC input and APM16 modules for 240 volts line to line applications. But to have a 11 kilowatt design, when we talked about the totem pole PFC, we mentioned about it at a 6.6 .6 kilowatt level interleaved two phase solution. We can use the two phase solution or three phase solution. That means basically there are three high frequency legs available and three inductors to deliver each 3.3 kilowatt equivalent to get the 11 kilowatt. But you can also make two-phase solution with 5.5 kilowatt for phase also can be implemented. Then there is also the solutions where with the three-phase input like a 208 volts three-phase AC or 480 volts AC, we can also implement six-switch PFC power stage. Then finally, for LLC topology, we can use the same design as a full bridge on the primary LLC and the secondary side, based on unidirectional or bidirectional, we can use uh, either rectifiers or the synchronous rectifiers. All right. Well, Prasad, I think that's almost all I have time for today. But before you go, can you recap your main points for me? Yeah. So for industrial chargers, what we are looking from is 1 kilowatt to all the way to 6.6 .6 kilowatt. Then 7 to 11 kilowatts are mostly onboard chargers. It can be an industrial application where like a forklifts are considered as industrial, where you can use the 11 kilowatt design too, or maybe a light vehicles like a motorbike chargers and those things can be used for 11 kilowatts. Then in the end, all these industrial chargers, we are targeting industrial applications like lawnmowers, either push or riding lawnmowers, then autonomous lawnmowers, autonomous guided vehicles, and then all the power tools like SAW and all those type of things. On semi have a 650 volts MOSFETs for these most of these applications, two generation of 650 volts in production. On semi developing a third generation product line and we are sampling and will be available by end of the year in production. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Prasad. It is always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from On Semi. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.